In my younger days, when I was like um, 13 or 14 years old, I was very rebellious. So I don't believe in all these kind of supernatural things. So even when, let's say, I met into a situation, uh, a, a tough one, uh, or I have some um, difficulties in life, even when I pray to, to those um, gods, right, they don't seem to answer my prayers. So what happened was uh, one fine day, I was actually very fed up with my, with my dad trying to pester me to go to temple, etc, etc. So I told my dad, if let's say this um, Kuan Yin Mao is real, ask her to come down and ch challenge me. I show her one on one. And apparently that night it happened. So what happened was actually I was asleep in my, at home, in, in my bedroom, uh, deep, deep asleep. And in my dream, I actually dreamt of my altar in my living room. And the Kuan Yima actually came, jumped down from the altar and become a life-size human, human being in, in front of me. So as usual, I was, already I was already having the anger in me. So I punched the Kuan Yima, literally. I punched the Kuan Yima in the face. I really want you to do this. Is there anyone here? What did you find? Burning. You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. So what happened next was Kuan Gong came out. Kuan Gong was super, super huge in the living room. I became so tiny in, the, in, in my living room and Kuan Gong was like to the ceiling height and I screamed my lungs out in, in my dream. I literally screamed until when I woke up from my dream, I don't even have voice anymore. So the next day morning, I asked my parents in, which, who slept the next door and I asked them, do, do you all hear me scream last night very loudly? They said, no, I don't hear anything. But the thing is actually, I, the next day I actually have sore throat because I screamed so loud in my dream and it sore the next day. So what happened was the next consecutive seven days, uh, I saw uh, those um, Sijia Morning 4 in my bedroom. So because in my bedroom, I had drawn the curtains and all that. So at night when I sleep, it's, it's dark. But on my uh, top right corner of the cabinet, there will be this um, figure, a uh, silhouette of this um, god whereby it's so bright, it, it, it's a silhouette, it forms a silhouette, it's so bright in the room whereby I cannot even see anything, just that silhouette shadow. And I asked my father to come in to see. So I shout in the room. So once my father came in the room, the whole thing disappeared. And nobody managed to, to see that. So only I, I, I managed to see, see that image. And because I was still in secondary school, so I have to wake up early, like 6 plus a.m. in the morning to, to prepare myself to go to school. And always in the morning, I will see little kids running around in the kitchen, wearing those uh, red color checkered stripe, uh, like a singlet like that. So I always see two little kids running in the kitchen and I was so terrified. So it happened consecutive for the seven days and until the day where I cannot contain it with, within myself anymore, I actually uh, spoke to my father and I actually cried. I actually cried in front of my father and I told my dad that I'm sorry. I shouldn't have challenged and I've been seeing this, you know, this kind of things for the consecutive seven days. Is there any way that uh, we can stop this thing? So he brought me to the temple, we prayed and all that. So I apologized and I knew in front of the God for one hour, for one hour to be remorse about it. So uh, after which I, 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 don't see, I don't see them anymore and I totally forgot about the incident until uh, recently. Five years ago, about five years ago, so I, I, I happened to chance upon this um, temple. And once I entered this temple, this, uh, this master inside the temple should have asked me, uh, Paul, do you feel something weird within your body? I said, I don't really understand what you're what you mentioning. He said, you have been limping for like seven days, eight days. Uh, don't you feel any pain on your leg? I say yes, I do, but because I, I play sports, I play soccer every day, so I thought it's just a normal sports injury. But he said that no, because my temple is actually, uh, they did some ritual, so it's actually fully sealed already, the temple. So meaning to say no, non-spirituals are, eh, sorry, spirituals are not able to enter the premises. But because this black shadow able to enter the premise, so meaning to say uh, it's actually not a spirit, it's probably a god or something like that. So they say that, uh, are you prepared for what's going to come? And I say like, uh, okay, I, I'm totally not prepared. This is the first day I'm entering the temple. I'm just here with my friend to, to pray, which was now my current wife. I'm just here to pray. I don't have any, um, 
I didn't prepare anything at all. I'm just here to pray. So apparently this, uh, this uh, master from the temple actually told me that, okay, so what happened was the uh, Ape uh, is actually following you behind. So apparently he is actually trying to heal you something and then trying to be your guardian angel, something like that. So I said, okay, so uh, what does he want? So he said that, so the, the master should ask, did you do anything bad previously? So this story should be flashed back to my mind and I, and I spilled the beans out of the master. I mean, they already see everything, so I, there's no way for me to hide. So I spilled everything and then they said, uh, why not you try being a median? Yeah, and that's how my, my journey of being a median began. Yeah. From then on, uh, I have been a median for... This is my third year. This is my third year. So, uh, because before that, when you actually become in, uh, a, a, a median, you have to go through like trainings, like meditation, you have to do cleansing of your body, etc. So, that whole process is actually quite uh, quite tedious, la, I would say. It's quite tedious because whereby you, are, you free your time, uh, like after work, and then you're so tired already, but you free your time to go and do this kind of um, uh, spiritual trainings, whereby, to be very honest, it's not beneficiary to, 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 to you because you don't earn money from it and then uh, you, you don't even know whether you're really helping people or not because let's say um, during those events, those, um, let's say those uh, people will come and seek for help but because you are deep asleep and you don't even know what's going on throughout the whole four or five hours of the event. The only thing that I will remember is when I woke up and then I see those um, people who took videos of me of what I'm doing but I don't remember a single thing. In Singapore, we have a temple, but it's actually those, uh, it's quite common temple whereby it's inside those HDB houses, not like those uh, big temples you see outside like Loyang, Topekong, etc. So they actually are a branch from like Malaysia or from Taiwan, etc. So our main branch is actually in uh, KL Kepong. So usually on a yearly event, we will actually go up to KL Kepong to pray, etc. So, but because of the past um, COVID year, so we, we didn't manage to go up. So what happened was uh, we will actually have to go up, we will have to pray to the, the main uh, master who is actually residing in um, KL Kepong to let them know that uh, we are actually going to enter this, uh, this, uh, this line of religion and then we are going to be a median and then if let's whether will they accept us as a disciple or not. So once they accepted us, right, then we have to go through those um, proper procedures whereby we have to uh, pray, we have to chant some rituals, and then we have to sit there for meditation. Actually, by right, we are supposed to meditate at least once a week. But because of the workload and all that, with the Singapore fast-paced country, right, so usually we only do it like once a month to, to, to try to catch up. But because like, uh, in Malaysia, if you've seen videos from Malaysia or Taiwan, they will do it almost weekly. So they are very uh, spiritually connected to, to whoever they pray to. Because when we meditate, right, so we just, um, as usual, it was a Taoism, so we just um, burn the joysticks, we put it on the, 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 the outer. So we just sit down there and then the main purpose is actually to clear your mind. So whatever comes in, comes in. There was once whereby uh, we actually, I, when I was uh, so-called meditating, so I actually managed to see a place whereby it belongs to Hong Hai Er. So in olden days, China. So he have he is a Hong Hai is actually a small little boy, like probably six years old. But he he is a uh, he he was very similar to me, very uh, defiant to the to the parents and all that. That's why he was actually the so called uh, the follower of Kuan Yin Ma. So that was the one I saw in my kitchen. Yeah, for the past consecutive seven days. And then uh, I actually saw how his house looked like. It's actually a volcano. Yeah, he stayed in a volcano with waterfalls and all that. It's a very nice scenery. So after which then I know that, oh, okay, so this is the little boy that I saw in my kitchen. And then uh, after which I also became the godson of this uh, Hong Hai Er. So because uh, I don't have third eye, so I don't know how it is it like to see spirituals, but I will be able to know where they are I'll be able to know uh, whether they are there or not because I can't see. So sometimes when you walk, you will feel like, eh, there's something there. But I can't see, so I will just walk through it. So when I walk through it, you will feel the breeze <coughs> and all that. And then you will feel like uh, your hair starts to tingle. But 
uh, I have that since I was young when I was 13, 14 years old but I didn't take that very seriously because I don't even know what, what was that when, when I was in my younger days so usually I would just uh, uh, go through it especially during 7 months whereby people are burning those incense paper downstairs etc so those are the period whereby it's very very strong to me Are you still under tutelage or are you able to do your own mediumship thing? Uh, I'm actually still under tutelage because to be very honest this uh, median thing is not whereby we can master it within one year, two years usually they will do like at least a 10 years to actually fully uh, connect to the to the god that's going to uh, possess mm. so uh, what happened was during the first uh, the first one year it's very uh, uh, it, it, would, it takes a very toll on my body meaning to say even though I do sports I'm very athletic but uh, after the whole the whole session even though it's only like one hour I will feel very very lethargic I feel very sore around my whole body after that because the, the strength that they have and us as a human it's very different so if like let's say right now you ask me to hold a 10 kg metal chain and walk around I, I can't because it's really very heavy but once I'm uh, I transited to be to be a median and uh, the, the, the god actually possessed me I'm able to do that inside the cemetery I can hold the metal chain I can walk around I can whip the metal chain I can play like a toy it's like a normal rope but whereas if right now you ask me to do it I, I, I really can't yeah was okay so why was I actually born with this uh, sin kut? meaning to say uh, any spirituals or God can actually possess me freely. The reason was because in the olden days, my grandfather, who was supposed to be a median, but he rejected the role. So he actually passed down to the next generation, which was my father. So my father also, same thing, rejected the role. So it came down to me. So if let's say I do not take up this role, it will pass down to my son, who will be like uh, 18 years old in next like, 15 years so by then he will have to take over my role so uh, it don't it just no point to keep on uh, rejecting it and then passing on to the next generation so I, I took it up and then uh, just end it lah. Uh -huh. just end it at my generation ever since then have you gone back to talk to the Brothers of Mercy mm. or the Kong Kong and have a conversation with them could you have called them and have a discussion about your past uh, okay, so what happened was uh, one during the day when I first stepped into the, the temple as mentioned as I mentioned earlier so the master actually uh, knew something was wrong with me so I actually did uh, pray to, to Kuan Lima in the temple and I actually seek for forgiveness and then uh, we actually have to throw this uh, uh, yeah the, the sum pay lah, to, to see whether if they were to seek my forgiveness and then I actually got it lah. so yeah so ever since then it, we we have a peace treaty from there. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.